today is lift struts. Looks like a pretty simple task. Uh, I've got most of the parts gathered up here that I'm going to need. I've got my doubler plates, my CCPQ66 rivets, and a couple tools. What they tell you to do is you want to draw a line centered with this hole here out a few inches, enough to go just a bit past where this doubler would lie parallel to the lift strut, and that's going to be the line that you reference through these holes for match drilling. To do that, I'm going to use this piece of extrusion that I've got. It's a one inch by two inch, I think. I'm going to hold it against the front of the lift strut and bring it over, center it up with that hole, and I'll just use this as a guide to draw my line. That way I know I'm going to have a parallel line. And then I'll do all my match drilling and riveting and there you go, you'll have a complete lift strut. It looks pretty simple, so I'm gonna get into it. I've got one end of this strut match drilled, both sides. I've labeled the sides A and B, and then I've labeled the doubler plates that I used for those sides A and B, just to keep them, to use the same plate that I used to match drill. These are CNC machined, so I don't know that it matters, but that's just what I did. I'll throw a bolt in here to locate the end, and then I'll just click the end here. And I'll probably put one in like right here. And now manual says to match drill through these holes, number 11s. And of course, then that will be the size, final size for the uh, CCPQ66 rivets. For that operation, I don't think I want to hand drill these. I think I'd like to go ahead and set this up in my drill press. That way, I'm, just, I'm certain that I'm getting perpendicular drill holes through the spar, I'm sorry, through the lift strut and the doubler. Ideally, to do this, I could 3D print a cradle with an airfoil shape, and it would just sit on there. Don't know if I'll go through that trouble. I will use this hole here where the bolt is. I'll run a drill through here all the way through to index it for perpendicular. And then I think I'll just maybe use some, I'll clamp some parallels or something to the drill press table and find a way to hold this in that position. I'll, I'll figure something out, but definitely want to do this on the drill press. All right, over here at the drill press, and this is what I've sorted out for my setup. Let's talk about it. So I've got my, I've got a vise clamped to my fixture plate on the drill press, and I've got a stand set over here to support the other end of the lift strut. Now what I've done is I've taken my level, and I've set a reference for whatever angle it's sitting at right now. Not necessarily parallel to level because I don't know what the condition of my floor is. So I've just clicked the reference button and it's kind of flickering between zero and zero five. And if I take that and I bring it over here onto the lift strut and I'm at, it's flickering between zero and zero five degrees. So between zero and five hundredths of a degree, I'm going to call that perpendicular to the coil of the drill. So get this out of the way. Now what I've done to keep the lift strut perpendicular to the drill this way is it turns out a couple parallels here. I've got one, an eighth inch parallel laying flat and then an eighth by half on edge. And that, if you look closely, catches just the edge of the trailing edge there of the strut. And then a eighth by half inch parallel across here at the front catches that edge. And I've run this 5 16 drill through the hole right now to index it. And that actually gets me a perfect perpendicular uh, to the, or parallel to the drill quill, perpendicular to the lift strut. So I know that this setup is going to get me good this way, and I know I'm good this way. 
So all I need to do, and I'll just loosen the vise slightly, and this will just slide through for each hole. So I'll go ahead and get a number 11, uh, put the 11 drill bit in here, and see what happens. Out really good. Got all my holes in there. Just got this Clico holding it, and uh, still got the bolt in here for indexing. Um, that gave me nice, clean, perpendicular holes uh, this way and that way, both axes. And now I go ahead and um, before I change this setup, I'll do the other the other end of it, and then the other strut, and then I have to flip things around because they're going to have to be rotated. So. Um, I will do one, two, I'll do three more ends just like this. I'll flip the setup and I'll do the other four across both struts. I pulled the strut out and figured I'd give you a closer look at the setup that I did with the parallels. So I've got this one flat, this one sitting up on edge, and then this one sitting up on edge. And this arrangement here is what's getting me that nice straight shot through the lift strut. I finished all the ends of the struts with the one setup. Now I've mirrored it, put the leading edge of the strut on this side, had to move the vise over to get them lined up, but uh, I'm basically all set up here to go ahead and do the others. I'm changing something on these. I, after I had gone through and done those, I was checking the fit of the rivets in the holes, and they're fine, but it seemed like the bit might have walked a little bit and maybe opened the hole by an extra uh, two thousandths. I think it's well within the tolerance of what the hole should be, but I know I can get it better. So on this side, when I, on this setup here for all of them, I've changed this out from a number 11 to a four and a half millimeter, which is slightly undersized from number 11. And then I'm final sizing it with this reamer. This is an 1875 reamer. And when I did, I've already done one and I've checked the fit and I get just a beautiful slip fit of the rivet in the hole. So. Uh, the other half of them will be done with this setup. The first half will be done with the number 11 straight through. Um, like I said, I'm not worried about it. It's fine, but I, I knew I could get a slightly better fit. A mill would be the perfect way to do this because then you wouldn't have any walking of the, of the tool through the hole or whatever. You'd get just a perfect fit. So I'm not going to put this on a mill, but I'm going to do the next best thing and kind of two-stage it with a slightly undersized hole and then a final size on the reamer. Now that everything is drilled, uh, the next step is to go ahead and deburr all of these parts. I'll just use my little de speed deburring tool here. And for the struts, I'll use my 3 16 in and out deburring tool to be able to catch that uh, outside surface as well as the inside surface in there. Got everything cleaned up. I've gone in with some Scotch Bright, hit the outsides. I've checked the insides; they feel pretty good as far as I can reach in. And uh, I've Scotch Brighted the parts; they're nice and smooth. So now it's time to go ahead and rivet these in place. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the rivets just in some black satin black oil enamel, and just wet rivet these in just to give a little extra protection against the. Uh, stainless of the rivet against the aluminum and uh, get those riveted in there for that. I'll use my pneumatic gun today. My Marson battery powered gun, it will do it, but I seem to get better results when I go pneumatic on these larger stainless rivets. So.
Got this riveted in, both sides. Same thing down there, both sides. One thing I did uh, after the first one is I realized I probably would like to prime or paint the surface that mates up to the, uh, to the lift strut. So what I did is I just painted the one side of it, slipped it in, and then wet riveted. Um, only one of them down there is not that way. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I should have done it, I should have thought about that. Don't need to do it. It's just for just a little bit of extra corrosion protection between those two surfaces right there. Not a big deal. And I really don't feel like drilling out stainless rivets and redoing it. So that one's just gonna be that way, but the others I am doing that. Uh, I've just gotta do one more strut, and then I have to open these up to 7 16 For that, I'll probably do the same setup in my drill press that I did earlier for these. Back at the drill press, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this hole drilled out for the 7 16 bolt. I'm not gonna go straight through with a 7 16 on the first pass. Uh, I've got a 10 millimeter checked up in here. That's about 393 thousandths. And I think 4375 is the 7 16 So I just didn't wanna hog out too much in one pass. So first 10 millimeter, then I'll hit it with the 7 16 <laughs> Ten millimeter has been done. Now I'm up to the final size of the seven sixteenths. Well, I've got all the holes final size to the seven sixteenths. That all turned out real nice. I take a bolt, drop it in, just snugly fits. Pretty much like a slip fit, no slop or anything. Uh, last thing I need to do is take this machine fitting here. This is the root end or the inboard end of the lift strut. And this fitting will get inserted between the doubler plates and then this AN7-20 uh, with some washers gets put through it. and a completed lift strut assembly. All right, so really these things went together pretty easily. It is a critical component. I mean, it's really critical. <laughs> if this anything fails here, um, it's a bad day. But uh, there's nothing difficult about this. It's just, it was really just making sure that my holes drilled in were uh, perfectly perpendicular in both axes especially this one since that's a through bolt going all the way through both sides of the lift strut extrusion. Uh, but I had no trouble with that, setting it up on the drill press. You, honestly, you could hand drill this if you were very careful. I bet you a lot of guys do. I just wanna be extra careful on this type of an assembly. So I took a little extra time on it. Happy with how it turned out. So I've got, uh, I've actually finished the other one. So both lift struts are done. Uh, these, I think, I think I can go ahead and prep these for paint. I can hit them with the uh, Aluma Prep and Prime and then paint them. And I might do that in the next week or so. But for now, this will be the end of this episode. This is the end of Lift Struts. Thanks for watching.